The Unquiet Dead was on one of the very first episodes of the new series. And one thing that I have learned, but eventually kind of deprogram myself to do, is to stop looking at the early show and kind of look at it like, oh, it was all awesome, because it very much had its rough edges. Looking, I recently watched it all back to back, um, and uh, before I did the rewatch for this episode specifically, and realized there are very big fundamental flaws. Some episodes aren't as good as I remember on my first initial viewing, but again, my first initial viewing of this entire series came from my PBS station was actually rerunning the entire first series. Um, two episodes at a time, though when they did uh, the finale, they, they, they actually did... Um, actually, when they did the finale, if I'm, if I'm right, they put the last three episodes um, aired together... Because they didn't want to interrupt the two, the uh, the finale two-parter, and they also put in like the confidential, the Doctor Who confidential, at least the cut-down version. Because from what I understand, back when they did confidential, now now it's um, canned apparently. Um, the the versions on the DVDs were pared-down versions of a uh, like of a, a forty-minute show or, or something like that, much longer than the ones on your available DVD. And I kind of was just watching this in awe, going, oh my god, Doctor Who, this is awesome! Because I kind of got into it. I started with Series 3, because BBC, cause that's where BBC America was at the time. And did that. One of the few episodes, one we'll be covering later, the two-parter with the gas mask. And... The, uh, some episodes stand in stronger, still stay strong. Whereas Rose is very much a pilot. End of the Earth has a few flubs in it. Aliens of fucking London. Unquiet Dead, I think, for the most part, is completely untouched. Uh, it's still very well constructed, and depending on who you talk to, is still probably Mark Gatiss's best story. And that's definitely because a lot of people think Mark Gatiss has not been the greatest of writers. Where I think he's been fairly strong, but whatever. Some people hate Victory of the Daleks. I enjoy it. Anyway, Unquiet Dead is a very simple story, with, but I that's kind of taking things away from it. It's simple. The Doctor awakens at this time, the time of Char before, basically before Charles Dickens' death, because Charles Dickens is the main character. And in a weird way, ha, you know, taking the idea of ghosts, something that he didn't personally believe in, but just thought it'd be a fun idea for a story, at least that's what I got from him. I've seen this many times now, and I'm still vague. I'm sorry. I'm so, I have a terrible memory. But he's very much not... He doesn't totally believe it. He, he thinks he's very much... Uh, uh, realist and, un and knows reality from fiction. Then he gets taken on this adventure that, let's face it, if it were to happen in real life, you would still wouldn't be believing it happened in real life. And have him chase the, uh, with the Doctor, figure out the whole mystery behind this. And through this, we get a simple, fun story with ghosts, well, aliens who are pretending to be ghosts. Yeah, Doctor Who does that a lot. It makes you think you're looking at one thing until the big twist, it's usually somehow some sort of alien. Whatever, it's science fiction, I go with it. Now, one big thing to bring up is uh, the, actress who pl the, the actor who plays Charles Dickens. Apparently, he kind of made a small career out of playing that character. He's apparently done some plays, at least a one-man show about him. The guy's kind of carved out that market, which is good, because the guy's great. Uh, and mind you, of course, the only story I am aware of by the writer himself is the billions and billions of rehashes of A Christmas Carol that's somehow not completely hated but yet. Like, it's a trope I see that can still be done well, 
well, sometimes it's not done well. Jim Carrey. But, oh, no, I, I, oh, I liked him. There are some people who, who, you know, you'll see an actor play an historical figure and just somehow get, get to the meat of it and, and just make the role sink. Again, I don't know anything about the guy at all, but I loved him. You know, he was like, Doctor, I don't believe you. And his amazement and, uh, you know, the small moments between the Doctor and him. More particularly, the one where he has to explain what a fan is. Like, you know, what I am talking about this show. And I love them. Um, the cast is poured down to what seems to be five people. Dickens. And the other two supporting characters are the uh, the... Um, I am blanking on the word. Not the cemetery, but I, I, I had to go to this recently too. I feel stupid. The guy who runs the place, who, and I love the fact that you know the guy who oh, morgue. I, I think I'm no, not the morgue. Mortuary. We're going with mortuary for now until I can think of anything. I'm that I'm that bad at this. I apologize. <laughs> I loved him because, hey, because just this little hint, the fact that he calls the people who wake up from the dead and walk around stiffs. I love that because there's kind of a joke I've seen in fiction where you kind of need to make your own fun when you work that job of putting, of, you know, looking after cadavers and preparing them for funerals. I just love that. He was generally fun, kind of a little bit ounce of humor to him. His assistant, who is, is it, is her name Gwyneth? She, of course, it goes on to play Gwen Cooper and they even kind of retcon in that, you know, she's an ancestor of her. I loved her. Um, I specifically love the fact that, uh, you know, her, her psychic, because she has, a, they play up a psychic ability, has a connection to the whole plot with the Gelf and, I love the fact that, big spoiler here, she gives her life to, you know, protect it, and which is a big thing to do, especially a character we've never seen before. But I, I did feel you got to at least know her fairly well as a person, and you feel bad that she sacrifices herself in the end. Uh, my favorite scene with her, though, is actually the one with her and Rose. I don't know. It's A, it's fun to see these women who look like they're roughly the same age from these two different time periods and kind of see the juxtapositions yet see the things that don't really s seem different for people in that in that age group they got along talked about skipping school boys and all that i found that i found that slightly entertaining rose herself is definitely a strong example of a because we at this point this is the only the third episode RTD writes her kind of clumsily, in my opinion, from those. Uh, she does things that aren't entirely likable and throw fire into the Let's Kill Rose Tyler fan club that, you know, has been around for years and will never go away as long as the show is relevant, at least the current show. Because there are people who love her and there are people who definitely hate her. Here, I think they got her right. She's exploring. She's basically the moral person who says you can't let these ghosts take these bodies it's t defacing the lives of those which recently made me think of a Outer Limits episode I watched we're not bringing that up and I don't know I, I just love her kind of reaction to it all she gets along with everyone very well especially the doctor him himself is he's definitely up he's definitely raised a bit over um he's not simply kind of playing it autopilot he uh eccleston's the doctor playing it up strong um my favorite moment though my, there's two moments and they're just kind of quiet talking moments um him meeting charles dickens is definitely the great like the most memorable scene where it like instantly you it clicks he, he just somehow clicks as the Doctor completely. Not saying he wasn't the Doctor at all, but it, it just kind of... That episode, you're just like, he's on after that. 
where he meets Dickens in the carriage and just gushes about him, and yet somehow keeps a little bit of honesty because he's like, "Oh, I love that book, except that, except that one. That that was that was a bit crap. Definitely like an internet fan poster, or me." And um, I love that. And the other one I kind of love um, was when him and Rose are back into a corner being chased by the bodies who are possessed by the uh, Gelf. And I just love the fact that he kind of, in a way, laments the fact this is happening. They're like, I faced down wars, Genghis Khan. Like, I, I saw World War Three, And this is how I'm going to die. Attacked by ghosts. I, I, I just kind of love that. It, 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 it's funny, but also, in a way, it's telling of him. He, he did expect to die a little bit more of a bang than he, or anything. Uh, I, li- I really like this. It's a very nice, um, uh, it's a very good solo story. If you, I, I dare say you could uh, just p- play this one for if you want someone. If, if you're new and you want to sample the show, this is a good one, place to start. Um, though, one thing I haven't brought up yet, and I will bring up with um. I should just bring up now. A big problem with this season and kind of um, the early like season, series two had this too, but a up front. Um, I'm sorry. Just a phrase doesn't count as an overarching story point. But also, um, try not to make it sound like you crowbarred it in and made sure it couldn't get out because the mention of bad wolfiness is painful. That's a major part to bring up since it's a big thing leading to the end, and it's kind of a distraction from the review. Ignoring that, because if that's one thing that'll just stick out if you try and just watch this single one and then leave the show alone, because it's very much kind of weird and very forced. It also doesn't help that in Boomtown, one of the very first, I think it was the first one I did for Doctor Who Week 1, they the way they bring it up was just like train stopping bringing up the plot point. like it was like the ultimate pex of it where it just seemed to st- the story stopped and it, and we spent like maybe a minute and a half building up to this idea just to brush it off because the RTD forgot he's writing another episode right now it could that's that kind of telling of it, of, of just how this in Series 2, 4, 4 is probably the best in terms of building up to an arc in the RTD era. No, 3, 3 is the best. 4, I think 4 does a, does a good job, far better than the first two. Um, oh, 5 trumps them all. I think five's big build's better, but yeah, I, I just wanted to get that part out of the way. Um, again, Unquiet's Dead. Unquiet Dead's great. Go, definitely go if you're new to Doctor Who and just want a single episode. I'm sure it's on Netflix. Uh, check that out. It, 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 or if not, if you're not going to check out the first episode and you just want to kind of go in the middle, I know I've seen people who definitely want to do that. T- take that advice. Do that or Blink or a few others. 